And again, uh, you also have, I have a bit.ly up there, um, which is a shortcut to this presentation deck, which you could have after we're done. Um, I'm Brian Friedlander. I'm a um, professor of education to call St. Elizabeth, as well as doing consulting in the field of assistive technology. And over the last two or three years, um, uh, as, as I age and everyone else ages, uh, there's been just a tremendous um, increase in the use of smart devices. In this case, I'm going to say probably Madam A, uh, because I have the Alexa devices all over my, my household. So let's get started. So, you know, one of the, one of the really nice things about this technology, and I'm going to go fast through this, is that we really want to help um, older folks or seniors uh, become more, um, more independent around their household. Many seniors or want to stay in their homes and so some of these technologies can keep them in their homes more safely um, and also allow them to access um, you know information news things of that sort so when we look at you know older adults uh, these technologies can support them in the home school and at work so we're going to be focusing on um, basically the Alexa, but also, you know, Google Home as well. This is ever changing. These are just some of the different um, Alexa devices that you can find in homes. Um, I would say probably in the last two years, the, um, the, the Amazon or Alexa with screen technology, having screens, touch screens has become um, one of the more um, useful models because it can display, you know, visual displays, whether you're getting the weather, or seeing lyrics to, um, you know, phones um, and the sort. So uh, again, if you're looking at devices, just a consideration for those individuals that um, have good vision, um, having the screen technology with a camera can be really helpful. And if you're working with the visually impaired, the um, a lot of the, the Echo screen technology can actually identify, for example, cans of food or food um, in your pantry by just putting it up to the camera, which is kind of exciting. So one of the interesting things that you can do with some of these devices also hooked up with other um, like webcams is, you know, you can check in with your mom and dad, see how they're doing remotely. You can also do video conferencing, which has proved to be a really important um, feature uh, as we go through this quarantine process. I mean, it's just incredible how many seniors living in assisted living centers, nursing homes, were not able to communicate with their loved ones. So having these devices can be really a, an essential communication line. You can also get notifications for tasks and reminders. And of course, the, all the environmental controls, we may take for granted that we're physically able, we can get up and do things, but you can turn on lights or open doors you know, with your voice. And you can also monitor who's coming in and out of your home by using something like the ring. So Adam, I'll let you take it away. Okay. So, um... Yeah, in terms of... Uh, well, let me just go to the next. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, um, this, is, this is a really nice uh, slide that, that talks about all the different things, or at least some of the things that you can do with smart speakers. Um, obviously, you can stay in touch with people. Um, this is really important, uh, especially in the in the time of the pandemic, to be able to check in with people if uh, a, a number of older adults are living in, uh, in locations where visitors are not allowed or severely restricted. So this is a really great uh, ability to check in and maintain some sort of a, uh, at least the next best type of connection. And uh, as we all know, you know, having connections with others is not only something that is good to do, but it also is very important for mental health and, and overall well-being. Um, and that's one great thing about smart speakers is it really provides a lot of different ways to communicate. Um, in, in obviously, you know, a lot of older adults prefer to use the phone and, and that's okay. 
Um, but this really uh, provides a whole nother element and, and a whole nother uh, ability to connect with people through, through um, being able to see the person, et cetera. Um, keeping up with the news. This is something that's really, really easy to do with smart speakers um, and is great for, for folks who are having difficulty reading the newspaper or turning the pages on the newspaper or they can't afford the expense of getting the newspaper every day. You can, you can simply request, you know, what's the news today? And it will, it will read it out to you and, and tell you. Also great for people with visual impairments who have difficulty reading a standard or even a large print newspaper. Listening to audiobooks, um, I don't really have to explain the benefit of audiobooks, but it's great for those who have difficulty with reading, those with difficulty with, uh, with vision, handling books, turning pages, etc. cetera. Um, playing games to maintain cognitive abilities. This is a, this is a great feature um, to keep your brain active. Uh, setting alarms and reminders. This is something that, that I've had a lot of experience with working with um, adults with disabilities and using Alexa. This ability to independently manage your schedule, to get reminders when events are coming up that you have to do, um, to be able to link your uh, smart speaker to your digital calendar. Um, and uh, this, this is a, a really nice feature for helping people maintain independence, to be able to manage, uh, do more time management, and just keep oriented as to where they are in time and, and in terms of things that they need to, to take care of. Um, Can I just ask something, Adam? I just want to yeah. Yeah, I, I, was, I was working with some, um, some adults who had um, some traumatic brain injury. And when I talked about using timers in the kitchen, one woman was so excited because she's con constantly putting things in the oven and just forgetting about it. And the next thing she knows, her smoke alarms are going off. So just little things sometimes can make a big difference in independence around the household. Absolutely. And you bring up a good point, Brian. Um, both Brian and I, as assistive technology consultants, work with sometimes work with people that have uh, difficulty with memory, perhaps due to traumatic brain injury or or some other um, other type of injury or uh, condition. And the Alexa and all the other smart speakers are really great supports for memory. And obviously, you know, older adults are are at certainly at risk. For, for Alzheimer's and um, for, for other memory related um, conditions. And that's really something that uh, comes in very handy and, 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 and again, enables that person to, to be a little bit more independent. Um, you can order products through Amazon, right through your smart speaker, uh, which could be a double-edged sword. <laughs> could be tough on the budget, but uh, it's very convenient. But just, um, just, just remember, you can, you can password protect that so your kids don't get involved. <laughs> good, that's a good point. Yes. Or, or, your, or your, older, your older parent who's really likes to order stuff all the time. Um, use devices as an intercom. That's great. And um, another uh, area that I, I've been doing some work on directly is working with adults that use augmented communication devices and using those devices to control their smart speakers. And um, many smart speakers, especially the Amazon Echo, it, it will recognize synthesized speech actually very well. And um, so someone that does have a speech disability but has a communication device can also control um, at least the Amazon Echo and, and possibly other smart speakers as well. As well. Um, the last item on this slide, uh, something that I've been exploring a little bit more, is making voice dialed phone calls. So um, this is great for, for people who have difficulty operating a, a, a traditional smartphone. And if you have your, um, your um, contacts stored, you can, you can do voice dialing. So you can say, you know, call mom or 
call Mary or call whoever uh, is in your, your directory and you actually get to make the phone call uh, directly through your smart speaker. The other thing too is if, if you have um, a, a larger home, uh, using the Alexa devices as a, uh, inter a room intercom feature, if you have them in different rooms, can be really helpful for making announcements and for people communicating in households, whether you're up and down, um, can be really handy um, as well. Yeah, and uh, another thing I think Brian's gonna talk a little bit more about later, but I just wanted to mention it briefly, is um, for adults with significant physical disabilities, who need help controlling their environment, turning lights on and off, turning fans on and off, air conditioner, uh, music, TV, et cetera. Um, the smart speakers also provide a nice gateway to controlling a lot of those devices and potentially replacing um, some of the older environmental control units um, uh, that, that, uh, that have been on the market. So the uh, smart speakers have really gotten into just about almost everything uh, in terms of uh, things you can do at home. Great. Um, just so you're aware, I mean, this is ever changing. Um, the number of devices that are uh, either developed are from uh, Amazon themselves, whether it be the Echo Dot, which started the revolution, or you have the Echo Show with the screen. You now have Echoes for the car. You have um, Amazon makes smart plugs that you can plug lights in. You have microwaves that are building Alexa into it. You have headsets with Alexa, light bulb, um, and the ring doorbell and ring webcams. So there's lots of technology that is being built into other devices that can take advantage of the um, Alexa smart devices. So I do want to uh, mention that, I just want to see if something I want to mention that. Can people please mute their, please mute your, um, this is, please mute your microphones. Thank you. This is really important. During this quarantine and the coronavirus uh, episode that we're having, Amazon wanted to make everyone aware that, um, l let's say, a son or a daughter can send an Alexa device to their loved one and they can set it up remotely as long as there's Wi-Fi. The trick is, I don't want to give you all the steps, you can, you can get that from Amazon, but the trick is, is when you order the Alexa device, you want to order it as if it was a gift so it's not synchronized to your account. And then once you, your loved one gets the Amazon Alexa device, you'll be able to actually remotely set it up for them. So this way you can give them a device that you can communicate with. So that's really important. So when you purchase it, purchase it as a gift for your loved one. So who can benefit? Adam talked a little bit, especially individuals with visual impairments. If you go on the web, you'll see, uh, if you go on YouTube, you'll see all the individuals with visual impairments because there's, there's no visual interfaces needed. Individuals with motor impairments, again, turning lights on, turning lights off, things of that sort. Individuals with reading disabilities, Adam talked about how you can access, you know, um, audible um, books and listen to, listen to books. And also individuals with organizational or memory issues, setting reminders, to-do lists, shopping lists, things of that sort. And also individuals using AAC technology can use their device to give the commands to Alexa to execute them. So there's really no end in sight in terms of what can be, can be done. So Adam, you wanna to, you want to do this one? Go to it. Yeah, sure. Um, when the uh, smart speakers first came out, I was uh, uh, one of my adult clients uh, received the gift of the Amazon Echo Dot. And I thought, wow, I mean, you know, could this really work? And I was kind of skeptical at first whether it would be able to recognize synthesized speech. But to my pleasant surprise, it actually worked really well. It worked really well. In fact, sometimes I think it recognizes synthesized speech a little bit better than, than human speech. I know it sounds weird, but it seems that way. And, um, this is really great because many people that use communication devices, not all, but many, also have significant physical disabilities and they have difficulty accessing things like the telephone, uh, turning lights on and off, 
um, playing music, um, connecting to other devices, etc. Um, also, there's, there are lots of what they call ECU systems, environmental control unit systems, which have been around for a while, but they are often quite expensive. Um, there are also special telephones, um, which can link to a communication device via infrared. And those are also expensive too. And uh, what we're seeing is that the um, smart speakers um, can it, at times replace many of these functions. Uh, and just, just one word of, of advice here, if you are working with someone that does use an augmented communication device and they want to use a smart speaker via synthesized voice, just make sure that you test the device with whatever smart speaker they have or are thinking of getting. I mean, I've used it with the Amazon uh, system and also with the, um, the Facebook portal which also has uh, Amazon Echo software embedded, and it works with both of those. But I haven't used the Google Home yet with an AAC device, so if anyone has, um, just please let me know um, because it'd uh, be good to know uh, if we could add that to the list. Okay, so you covered some of those, but certainly um, the Google Nest, the Nest Hub, um, the Next Hub Max, and then Adam had talked about um, the portal. The portal is really kind of interesting. I I, I, ha I I had a chance to look at it on uh, one of my friends' homes, and it it's got a you know very large screen. It also has the ability to kind of follow the individual around, so you get a really nice view of what's happening um, in the uh, in the environment. Okay, and uh, we just got a comment uh, saying that uh, AAC devices work well with Google Home, so that's okay. good to know. Thank you so for that comment. I know we were talking about Alexa. I've had personal, um, I've been using Sociavi, which is a, another device. It's actually an Android based device with a touch screen. And this, is, this device is actually meant more as a communication device. It, and so it can be used as a picture carousel so that um, I can upload pictures uh, to a loved one. Uh, it also, I, I've done this, it allows you to um, invite other people to put pictures up so that we can keep loved ones in the loop as to what's happening in the family. And it's also very easy to do video conferencing. So basically the uh, loved one would just tap on the, on the screen with a picture of their child or loved one and start a video conference. It also supports reminders and scheduling. It has an easy to use touch interface and um, it, it has both an Android and an iPhone app for management. And the nice thing too, it's made here, well, it's, it was designed in New Jersey uh, by Paula Muller um, and I've worked with both Paula uh, and, um, you know, to, to help understand and to give her some feedback. So it's a great device, easy to use. And I, I think one of the things that's really important um, overall is the, the user interface. If you're working with individuals that may not be tech savvy, uh, the interface um, is going to be really important. Um, you want to make sure that they're able to operate it. I've, I've supported a lot of people and one of my friends um, who's probably 10 years old and I went out and bought a Kindle Fire um, and every, every time I call him, he can't find where the icon, where the app is. So having a simple, easy to use interface, this device is very focused on keeping loved ones connected and it does a really good job um, with that. Brian? Yes. There's, there's two good questions about uh, Sociavi. Yes. Is there a fee associated and can people use Zoom with social um, there, there is a fee. I believe it's $25 a month and you can't use Zoom. It has its own video conferencing um, built in. Um, and it is also, if you want, you can also, there are other um, cognitive applications that you can install on devices, you know, as well. Um, if you're working with anyone that may have you know, um, you know, any kind of mental deterioration, there are some apps that can be used um, also. But most of the, most of these type of devices, uh, especially that support Wi-Fi were, you know, are going to require a monthly fee to provide the, basically everything's getting stored in the cloud. And so it's all that that you're paying for is, you know, sort of the cloud services to kind of host the pictures and things of that sort. Okay. Um, and, go ahead. 
Brian, I just wanted to interject something about Thank skills you. and, you know, third party um, apps that work with smart speakers. Yes. I know many of you may know about skills and, and, and other third party apps, but they're also a, a pretty big part of using smart speakers because they really extend mm -hmm. the functionality. In fact, that's, I think these companies are really relying on the third party developers to, to come up with the innovative uses and things that you can do with your, with your um, smart speaker. So it's important to, to explore the, um, the skills and um, because there's new ones being developed all the time. It, it's definitely a moving target. Yeah, and there's lots of really interesting skills, you know, for, you know, from memory, um, uh, pot, you know, listening to the podcast, listening to radio. I mean, so there's really no end uh, in terms of uh, there's literally thousands and thousands of apps and they keep expanding each and every, uh, each and every day. I will also say with the apps, um, uh, Amazon um, has something um, called Blueprints which are templates which would even allow um, you, um, even someone who doesn't have any coding ability, to create some very simple apps. So imagine that you had a caretaker coming in to your loved one's home. You can set an app up so that you can let, they can ask questions like, where do I keep the, you know, uh, the dishwasher detergent or where are the keys to the garage? So you can actually, using the blueprint, set up your own skills very easily by going through a template and asking, um, you know, answering questions. So, but skills mm -hmm. are, are just, I mean, it's, they're overabundant. I mean, and so it's important. So that's, that's a, a good another, way to put it. That's, that's, another, whole, that's another whole webinar probably, but um, there's certainly a lot built in. And one of the things that I've noticed, you know, over the uh, maybe a couple of years I've been using the Alexa devices is that, the artificial intelligence um, has really improved and the machine learning. And so a lot of times, like, for example, I have, you know, lamps that are connected with smart bulbs to Alexa. In the past, you had to be really exact and say, Alexa, you know, turn off the brown lamp, you know, to make it turn off. Now, if you, if you don't use the word lamp, you use the word light, it also can listen uh, to that and get it right. So it's becoming much, much better at figuring out what you want to do based on, you know, the kinds of things, routines that you have. In addition, one of the things that's really um, interesting, especially for individuals that may have impairments, is the idea of routines where you can go to your devices and, you know, you know say, you know, start, the routine might be called um, morning routine. You go morning routine, certain lights turn on, the blinds go up, um, your coffee pot goes on, and then you're ready to go. So there's really um, a, a, a large environment to, in a sense, program your devices that are connected to Alexa um, as, as well. So just, you know, a different, little bit different take on smart devices. This is actually another New Jersey um, company. This company, um, which I have the logo up over here. Let me just move this so you can see it. Um, is called Caregiver Smart Solutions. Their approach to caring for loved ones in the home is by, they have built um, a network of sensors, no cameras, but sensors that are placed throughout the household. And then they learn the patterns of your loved ones. And if something is awry, you will automatically get a notification. So for example, there may be a sensor on the refrigerator door and for example, if your mom or dad, dad opens the refrigerator on average 10 times a day and all of a sudden it goes down to two, your loved ones can get a notification like something's wrong. The same token, there may be motion sensors set up near the bathroom and it knows that you go to the bathroom three times in the middle of the night. Well, if you're not going or you're only going one, this, this is going to be a problem. So this is really um, more for you to kind of, you know, sort of preventive and to begin to understand your loved one's patterns to prevent something more serious um, from happening. So, and then you have a lot of seniors that don't want cameras in their household. So this can, is a way to monitor, but using um, sensors. 
So using, using sensors. So there's pretty much no limit to what you can attach to the Alexa device, whether it be lights, a thermostat, security, motion sensors. Um, do we have time? Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna play this as just a simple turning on a lamp with Amazon Echo. In this video, I wanna show you how you can use the Echo. Hold it, oh, let me go back one second. Can't get down here. In this video, I wanna show you how you can use the Echo to turn on a lamp. The lamp is connected to a smart plug that has been configured with the Echo. Echo, turn on Brian's lamp. Okay. Echo, set the brightness of Brian's lamp to 100%. Okay. Echo, turn off Brian's lamp. Okay. So in this video, so you just saw how easy that is to do. Um, in addition to smart plugs, there's also smart light bulbs that um, have basically Wi-Fi built in, so you can easily pair them up with the um, Amazon Alexa um, device. Mm -hmm. Let me just see. There's some chat question. Yeah, there was a there was a question about finding skills for seniors that are not too difficult, but not childish at the same time. Hmm. I have to. That's a good question. We'll have to think about that one. We have to. Yeah, I mean, you, there are some, um, when you go into the Alexa app, you can um, filter some of the skills so you can kind of fine tune it um, a little bit, but it may take a little bit of um, kind of vetting some of the apps, um, you know, that you can, you can, you can go through, but we can, that may be, that may be another good webinar, Adam, for you and I to do is kind of more like the skills and apps that yeah. um, use me. Yeah. Benefit yeah. From. And Brian, by the way, I got the, uh, the green light to, if we need a few extra minutes, no problem. Oh, okay, great. Okay. So let's go. Let me just. All right. So, I mean, where you, you can go for help. Um, well, this is uh, this is pre pandemic. Um, best, you know, <laughs> best, <laughs> best buy, um, Verizon, uh, YouTube has lots of videos on how to set things up and how to use the Amazon Alexa devices. Amazon support is very good. I mean, cause you can actually get to the Amazon Alexa department when you um, connect with them. Um, they've helped me through um, some challenges. Uh, for example, someone from Amazon um, sent me a, uh, an Echo to use and they didn't send it as a gift. And so it was, connected to the employee's uh, account, and they helped me kind of uh, redress that and get it connected to my account. And then there are folks like Adam and I that, you know, uh, are available for consultations, uh, virtual or uh, pre-pandemic. I'd actually go into seniors' homes and help set things up. And also United Way Caregivers Coalition, I've worked with them um, they, they had a couple of grants to actually put some devices uh, and provide support for seniors who were looking to uh, be independent and learn how to use um, this technology. And Brian, um, one thing I'd like to add uh, to this sure. list is uh, New, Jersey's networks, net, New Jersey's network of independent living centers oh, okay. are also a good place to, to connect with. Uh, I know, for example, um, HIP in Bergen County uh, recently got a grant uh, through the CARES Act oh, to provide assistive technology to adults with disabilities, mm -hmm. and um, including evaluations and, and uh, in some cases, purchases. So uh, independent living centers uh, are also a good, a good potential. And I just want to um, say that I've also been the Best Buy uh, and in terms of, you know, getting help on, on smart speakers, and they seem to be pretty much one of the best places around in terms of what they have, and, and also the salespeople seem to be very knowledgeable. That's great. Good to hear. Um, okay. So in, in terms of just kind of thinking through um, placing these devices, 
Um, certainly having, you know, good Wi-Fi is really going to be important uh, throughout the household. So that may be something that may need to be addressed prior to um, utilizing this. Um, and we have had, you know, a lot of, I, I've been doing this for a while. We have had some seniors that are resistant to using technology or they don't want cameras in their household. So um, this can take some time until they adapt and get used to that. And also individuals who are hard of hearing may have some challenges when it comes to, um, you know, listening to the commands, um, you know, of the devices. And that's why maybe having an echo, um, you know, show with a screen for the hearing impaired might be handy in terms of the visuals. For example, if I were to say, Alexa, what's the weather forecast? Um, if you can't hear the results uh, um, on an echo, an echo show, it would show you the week's um, forecast using, you know, visual icons with the uh, the, temp, the highs and lows for the day. So that might be a consideration is looking at getting some of them with a um, with a screen um, as well. Yeah. You want to add anything, Adam? Or well, I'd say uh, you know one of the biggest comments that I, I've gotten from people who you know who are considering this is is the privacy issues. I mean, there's you know there's there's definitely an issue there. And, and, you know, I think for those who have decided not to use it, they, they often cite the privacy aspect of it. And, right. you know, and I think that's, uh, th it's a legitimate um, thought. And I, I think perhaps some of the smart speaker companies need to do a little bit better in terms of giving people options uh, as to, you know, right. what's being, what's being shared, et cetera. Right. And there are, I mean, there are some ways that individuals, because um, basically in your, in your account, Amazon keeps like a log file of the kinds of services and what you're doing. So if you want, you can clear that file, you know, once a month. Um, but understand that when you do that, it's going to de sort of decrease the efficiency a little bit of, of your device. So there's kind of pluses and minuses, but I would agree that privacy issues are, um, you know, are, paramount and that some of the companies should be doing a better job around that. Yeah. So, um, I know some of you, I've kind of looked in the chat. Some of you have talked about, um, wise cameras. I've been, I've been using some of the wise technology for, since they're out, I, I supported them on Kickstarter. Um, the cameras are $20. They integrate with Alexa. Um, they detect motion sound, um, and you can also record video. It has a small SD card as well. Um, they will be releasing, for those of you that are interested in more home security, they're releasing a, um, I guess, a weatherproof camera uh, for outside use in August. They also have now light bulbs. Um, I install the WISE front door lock. Um, so my, my house is full of WISE equipment, motion sensors. So, I mean, for the money, I don't think you get better value on in the market i mean the, the, oh, oh. hey <laughs> you're right there brian yeah it might we have a new <laughs> topic, so everything um so I, I would say you know if you want to you know it's a kind of a easy way to dip your toes in the home security or home monitoring with these cameras the software is easy to use um, they also came out with a, a wise band that has actually Alexa integration built in as well. Mm -hmm. So they're always developing um, and it's very, very easy, um, uh, easy to use and easy to add on to your, um, your router. Okay. Yep. Okay. And let's see. All right. Wow. We got, we actually, we got through it, Adam. Got through it. Good job, Brian. Thank you. Um, if you, if you have uh, five minutes, please complete the short survey about this presentation. I, I put the link in the chat window. Great. I, I promise it, it should take no more than five minutes. If it does, then, then let me know and I'll, I'll give you a formal apology. <laughs> Try to make it quick. Um, also, the next slide has a link to the ATAC Disability Rights New Jersey uh, YouTube channel, which is where you'll find uh, the recording of this webinar, as well as uh, the recordings of, of lots of other webinars that um, that ATAC has 
has uh, hosted. Great. So maybe we, could, we maybe have some time. Anyone want to you know leave a question in the chat? We can glad to answer it now. Or you know you have our email um, addresses um, again. You'll, you'll get the video of this. Um, if you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to either Adam or myself. And if you have ideas for other uh, webinars that Adam and I can do that maybe go into more depth, um, let us know as well. We appreciate your feedback. And um, someone asked me, uh, and thank, actually remind me, I'm gonna put the link for the, um, the YouTube channel for uh, ATAC in the chat window as well. Doing that right now. There you go. Um, so thank you very much, everyone. And uh, thank you, Brian. And thank you, Naomi, for asking us to do this webinar. And Brian, I like the idea of doing a follow-on. Um, I, I think- um, Skills, yeah. Yeah, I think okay. it's a good idea. So I guess we'll talk to Naomi about that one. Okay. Or, you know, even what may be something more in depth where that, you know, like how you, you know, how you connect, let's say a, even a smart light bulb or something to a device. Uh, so more of a hands-on how to. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Great. Sounds good. So um, on that note, uh, everyone have a, a great day, be safe and uh, look forward for Adam and I doing a couple of more workshops um, on this topic. Cause I know there's a lot of interest, especially as our loved ones are confined to uh, spaces where they're having trouble communicating. Um, so uh, please keep in touch with us and the attack center for some new webinars. Great. Thank you. Have a good day, everyone.